All right, I think we're live. So, hello everybody. I am Frank Gamer, and this is the Frank Gamer Show, hosted by Frank Gamer. My guest today is super positive. Why don't you say hey, Paul? Hello. <laughs> and uh, we are going to be talking about video games. I know it's unusual on a show with the name Gamer in it, but whatever. So I would have you... never expected this. <laughs> I know, <content>. right? <laughs> so here's here's what we're going to be talking about. Um, we've got a lot of like industry stuff to get through, so like random junk that's happened in video games. But then we're going to be talking about oh, what do we have here on the agenda? The Fine Brothers, maybe. So well. <laughs> I know you're excited to talk about that, so Woo! I want to get to that as soon. Fun. Yeah, I want to get to that as soon as possible because I know that's something you're very passionate about, and uh, I am too. So let's go ahead and get through some of this stuff, and then we can talk about that. Okay. So first thing first is GameStop. They did a partnership partnership with Insomniac to publish more video games. Um, it's you know they actually said video game merchandise when they released it. But basically, they're doing publishing, is what they're doing. They're publishing games for them. Uh, the first game was Song of the Deep, which I haven't heard of and I haven't played. So I have really no comment on, on that I, story. I haven't heard anything about it, so I'm going to go <laughs> ahead and imply that it was a flop. Probably. Yeah, it sounded, <laughs> like, it sounded like artistic indie kind of game, but it's being published by GameStop. So how independent is it, really? I, I mean, who knows? So uh, Activision, Blizzard, they're doing Heroes of the Dorm. Which is an amazing name. <laughs> and anybody who argues otherwise does not know what they're talking about. <laughs> it's That's so great. So um, <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Okay, okay, for people who don't know, that's, Heroes, that's a Heroes of the Storm competition. But I think it's for like scholarships for colleges. So Heroes of the Dorm. Um, yeah. That's pretty perfect. That's a pretty good name. Um, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's something that I, I could get down with. <laughs> just, just the name, though, like not the actual game. You know, you're not a big Heroes of the Storm player, so... Well, I play League of Legends, and I've oh, yeah. played Hero of the, Heroes of the Storm, so... Yeah, I, I haven't played... I don't really play either, so, so it's not a big thing for me. So I don't, um, I don't know. I don't think you're missing out. <laughs> <laughs> it's, so here's... It's, uh, yeah, it's sorry. something that you, if you do want to get into it, like it's, it's very, it's easier to get into it with friends, but even if you don't get into it, that's fine because there's so many toxic people. So, oh, really? Oh, yeah. I didn't know the community was like Specifically that. Specifically on League of Legends. I'm not so sure about Heroes of the Storm, but. Yeah, I don't know. I guess it's the internet in general is like that. But, but let's go ahead. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to skip this thing about Take Two. Basically just Take Two's profits weren't as bad as they thought they were going to be. That's all, that's all. We're not happening. failing. Yeah, that's what that's what they were talking about. Um, let's go straight to EA. Um, EA hit an all-time high in terms of their operating cash flow, which me, <laughs> which they they attribute to revenue from their mobile department or mobile group, which grew seventeen percent year over year. So which basically, is... yeah, basically they're getting into mobile. The end. I mean. So. That's pretty good. I mean, I'm never going to say it's bad that, like, <laughs> yeah. they're getting yeah. into mobile. Like, ah, this well, is the end of video games. Like, no. Yeah, here's the, here's the other thing, because I was going to talk about this after. Um, Nintendo's getting into mobile, too. Like, they've already got that one game. Uh, what was it? Pokemon Go or something? I, I don't know. I actually completely forgot to look it up. Whoops. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, it's <laughs> something like that. Yeah, Pokemon Go or something, but... They, they're teasing another game now, and they said they're going to have a more established character in it. People are thinking it's going to be like Mario or something like that. Maybe Samus. But Samus isn't really established. I don't know. The people are just speculating. They don't know anything. So that's that. Um, the other news out of Nintendo land is Bayonetta and Corrin are in Smash 4. I have no idea who Corrin is. I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. I... You, I'm confused too. To be quite <laughs> frank, well, hey, oh, oh <laughs> I see what you did there. That is clever. That is so. Yeah, I've never heard. You that know before. me, bringing the clever jokes into <laughs> into play. Yeah. No. Uh, 
I get I get Bayonetta. Okay, you and I were talking about this. We I get Bayonetta. Um, Nintendo's got that exclusive deal, you know, where Bayonetta's only on the Wii U now. Um, I don't get the corn part. Um, you... I'm pretty sure that's just to hype up Fire Emblem. You think so? Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that's all that is, because otherwise they'd probably be adding different characters. Because yeah, I know so... that they've added the most Fire Emblem characters. Like, of all the characters that you can get, like, I think Fire Emblem is had some of the most right right and that see it makes sense that they'd be advertising other games so like bayonetta f- for that reason makes sense because maybe they're gonna do another bayonetta game and hey go buy bayonetta 2 on wii u that's that's essentially what why she's there corin i could see also the whole that whole argument you know oh she's uh is corin a male or a female again <laughs> 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 Whatever. You, I think you're asking the wrong person because yeah. I don't keep up with Smash entirely. But yeah. I mean, I can double check for you. Yeah, screw it. Who cares? Let's move on. I don't even. I don't. Who cares about Corrin? Nobody. So here's the thing. Well, unless you're a Corrin player, I'm so sorry if you're a Corrin player, um, and I've offended you. Uh, more, <laughs> more in Nintendo Land uh, before we get out of it. Uh, this will be the last topic on Nintendo Land, by the way. Fire Emblem Fates does not have dual audio. Um, and also, it took out the Petting Girls minigame. I'm really upset about that one. The Petting Girls minigame. <laughs> I'm, always, I'm always one of those people who, like, if you remove content from a video game, I'm going to be slightly upset. Yeah, but it, yeah. it's not going to be, like, the end of the world for me. <laughs> Well, from like a like a censorship standpoint, I could get that. You know, I get being irritated about it. Um, they're blaming localization. They're saying, "Oh, well, you know, Western audiences don't get it. You know, they're they think it's like something weird and they don't like it. So we're gonna take it out." Kind of. I mean, you know, I honestly, know. implying that we don't like something and then removing a piece of content from the game. Like I would still like the option at the very least. Like <laughs> I want to optionally be able to pet girls. That's that's it. I mean, if I just had the option to do that, I would be happy. I mean, you know? when you say it like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. But you're right. I, like anytime they they take something out and say it's for localization purposes, they're sort of making a judgment. You know. And I really Mm -hmm. don't like that judgment. Just leave it the way it was. At least give people the option of having it the other way. And that's why I'm so kind of irritated about the dual audio thing. Because they're taking away the option of having the original Japanese, right? So we're not even going to see the same game that the Japanese are seeing. We're going to see a completely different game localized, different story, different characters, you know. And that's happened before with Fire Emblem. Like, that's one of the big games for that. They'll take mm-hmm. out content and they'll rewrite it. It's it's freaking crazy. Yeah, but I, I feel like that's just in general, that's just a localization thing and Yeah. Yeah. Trying. I agree. So Oh, what can you do? Nintendo, you're crazy. You crazy, Nintendo. So let's talk about this. <laughs> I don't know if you're a big slasher movie fan, are you? Um Yes and <laughs> no. I've only seen a few. Okay. And if you well, were to ask me the names, I probably wouldn't be able to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I like I like them. Okay, I do. Um, from like a purely dumb movie standpoint, I like them. Uh, you know, so I was really excited when they announced the Friday the Thirteenth game. Um, oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah, they talked about it at PAX yeah. South, so that's a big thing right now. It's a Friday the Thirteenth game. And uh, it looks a lot like, um, what was that, Breaking Dawn? Was that, no, not Breaking Dawn. It's Twilight. Um, <laughs> are you talking about like, the most recent? Uh... Yeah, it was on PlayStation 4. It was the game where you had to survive until, uh, until dawn. Until dawn. Um, yeah, you had to survive until dawn. What is it called? I can't remember. Jeez, I, uh, I, I wouldn't be able geez. to tell you. Oh, gosh, they have to survive until dawn. No, yeah. So the Friday the 13th game, like, People thought it was going to be like that. So that's why everyone was hyped up. They were all like, oh, yeah, no way. Because Until Dawn did so well, you know, and it was like really big on YouTube. So now Friday the 13th, that's going to be the next big thing, right? Well, 
Yeah. <laughs> they talked about it, and it sounds like it's an asymmetric multiplayer game. So one person plays Jason, and like seven people play count camp counselors, right? That's what it sounds like. And so people were like, well, that could be fun, but they're thinking back to like Evolve, which was fun initially, and then sort of wasn't after a while. Oh yeah. boy, Evolve. Yeah, I know. It, they should have evolved the gameplay with that game. It's one huh? of those things where, like, evolve. Yeah, I, I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, we're just throwing. We're throwing. What is it? Where, what is it called? We're throwing fastballs. We're hitting home runs here today, people. We're, just we're using humor. <laughs> just so great. We're so punny today, too. Um. Anyways, yeah. Sorry. What were you saying about evolve? Did you have something to say? Just that Evolve was like a very, it was, I, I don't feel like it was very well thought out. No. In terms no. of gameplay. Yeah. And at, even at that, like, I think the DLC was announced long before we yeah. even had like a game trailer for it. <laughs> it was like a platform hate, for DLC, if I remember I that. that. Yeah, I hate when they do that because it just feels so money grubby. The DLC should not be... Like, that's, I understand if, like, corporate wants DLC, like, right away. Your customers, are, or I'm, I'm sorry, your gamers, your players, they shouldn't know about that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That shouldn't be on their mind when they buy a game is, oh, when can I buy the DLC, too? Can I just have... say that I never liked the idea of DLC? Like, just to go on a slight bit of a tangent. Like, I like, or not, not DLC. Like, I like the idea of DLC, but I don't like the idea of day one DLC. Right. Right, and I hated that with like Mass Effect, Mass Effect Three specifically, because they mm. had that DLC that had that extra character or whatever. And yeah. I went up like I went as soon as the game was out. I went up there and I bought the game. And the person was like, "Would you like the day one or would you like the the blah blah DLC?" And I was like, "There's already DLC for this game out." I I I, I just <laughs> got it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, this is literally the first day it's going up for sale, and I stood in line to buy this stupid game, and now you're upselling me for an extra ten bucks. This is ridiculous. Yeah, it's wow. um, it's one of those things where like because day one DLC is a thing, like I don't understand why you would buy day one DLC. <laughs> I on, have like, no idea. Like, I'm not even sure if I'm gonna enjoy the game you're selling me. Like, <laughs> wait till. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> right, right. So, um, okay. Last news item before we get out of the news area because we've been in here for a while and it's been fun, but we got to say goodbye to news soon. Um, VR. I think you and I have talked about VR like on our own before. I've, haven't talked, we? About, I've talked to you about VR once or twice in yeah. terms of like the HTC Vive and like the Oculus oh, Rift. Okay. Yeah, you know what's going on. So HTC is teasing the Vive, right? They're showing it off. Now AMD and NVIDIA say they're getting into VR. So that makes, what, Oculus, PlayStation, NVIDIA, AMD, and HTC all mm. doing VR, not to mention possibly Apple and Google, who might be doing something. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> well, beyond the thing you were talking about with the, the cardboard, <laughs> yeah, they have like a cardboard proof of concept VR thing right. that you just like tape your phone to the <laughs> other. <laughs> I mean, I could just strap my phone to my face right now. That's that's I VR, mean, people. That's the future, right that, there. That that is that is the future. And no, can I also <laughs> just say that that is one of the things that I'm not that that's one of the main nitpicks for me about VR: the fact that you have to strap something to your face. To <laughs> really, you don't like that? Um. I just don't think it'll catch on. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Because it's it does sort of cut you off from the people around you. It sort of ruins multiplayer, I think. Um and... <laughs> that's not the reason why for you. I just don't think it'll be like something that people will actively go out to purchase uh like to purchase and to use. Like I I don't think um virtual reality will be a thing for another few years or so okay okay so yeah like, that makes sense like um not saying that vr isn't cool like i i like the idea of vr and in fact one of my favorite games on steam at the moment is actually a uh, virtual reality capable or like or really? not it's compatible with the oculus rift more huh. or less it's the um keep talking and nobody explodes <laughs> oh yes i saw i saw some people playing that on youtube 
That is a beautiful game. It is so well designed. And even if you're not playing with a Oculus Rift, which is, I guess, recommended, but obviously not needed. Yeah. Like, even if you're yeah. not playing with it, like, w- with the Oculus Rift, that game is beautiful because it's just... It takes advantage of everything that it can. Like, I, thought, I thought you were going to say your favorite game was uh, Virtual Boy Tennis. I thought that's oh, what yeah, you were going to totally. say. Totally. Yeah, I just I love just seeing the color red. So that's like the best game for me to play is Virtual Boy Tennis. <laughs> it's just so great, guys. Nintendo. Oh God. Nintendo, you guys are brilliant. They got I into mean, the game way ahead. <laughs> too early. They didn't even have the technology ready. <laughs> that's how early they were. <laughs> oh, why do we keep coming back to Nintendo? I don't get it. Because why Nintendo we... is Nintendo, and Nintendo is awesome. <laughs> yes. All hail Nintendo. Woo! <laughs> okay, so let's talk about uh, what you wanted to talk about. The uh, oh. Fine Brothers and that whole situation. All right. Everybody <laughs> oh. sit down, get a beverage. And... So let's, oh, well, let's go over <laughs> what happened, first of all, because okay. I think we should recap that. So if you want to do a quick recap of how we got to this point, <laughs> I think it would be helpful. So... For those of you who do not know, uh, essentially what had happened with Fine Brothers Entertainment recently was that they announced a program that they were going to be uh, doing, I guess. It was like kind of like a partnership, pseudo-MCN, um, of uh, a program called React World, where essentially if you joined the program, you would be able to make videos in their React format, which is the main alarm right there yeah, yeah. so basically no but one else using can use like that yeah but using all their logos and assets that was the main deal the logos and assets hmm. that people were going to be able to make videos using their logos logos and assets which yeah on the surface like it sounds okay right on like, the surface I'll... it sounds okay but you also but the outrage came when they had tried trademarking the words react. I think uh, elders react, children react. Um, <laughs> I think they even did gaming, gaming react, because on like one of their other channels, they have a series called Gaming React, which right. is stupid, <laughs> mind you. <laughs> I didn't even know that series existed until I looked it up. <laughs> Yeah, what gaming react? Is you mean just... let's play? <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's been around, guys. I mean, I don't want to, you know, burst your bubble or anything, but yeah. So, so okay, so that's basically what led us to this point, right? Um, we had, <laughs> we had, uh, okay. So we had this whole ordeal spread out over maybe a couple weeks, right? And yeah. then all of a sudden... Well, actually, yeah, no, then, I think it all transpired within like four or five one? days. So it was like less than a week then that, that it, this happened. Yeah, it was like, I think two days from when the video was posted, that's when everything started going downhill for them. <laughs> like, okay. Okay. <laughs> which, by the way, those videos are down now. I'm pretty sure that somebody's re-uploaded them because... You are joking, right? Reasons? There's no. Oh my gosh! There's no. There's way no trace of React World on their channel. They just took out everything. They took it all out. They they have no. They they, they took no it down. They, everything that they worked <laughs> to try and get out there, they essentially took it down. Ah, uh, what are you guys doing? I mean, who thought that was a good idea to begin with? I mean, okay, look, look. If they wanted to do like a multi-channel sort of thing and bring in like outside people who wanted to, you know, do reaction videos to stuff, that's fine, right? Mm-hmm. I get that. Okay, there's a lot of react reactionists, reactors on the on YouTube, but um, I know one. I well, he he doesn't use the react in his titles anymore or like react oh, because of but... that, right? Uh, no, actually, he hasn't been doing it for a while. He just wants huh. it to be on, like, its own merit. Uh, mm. so Chad Tronic, I'm not sure if you know him. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'm, uh, Twitter friends with him. Yeah, so, um, Chad, Chad's a pretty cool dude. But, uh, what do you call it? So, yeah, like, the fact that they were trying to trademark the words React, Elders React, Children's React, 
basically <laughs> where all the out outlash came was when other YouTubers started speaking up when they were like, all right, well, they're trying to protect their, uh, their, their series is that, which right. by the way are yeah. not original in the slightest. They steal no, other people's that content. That killed me too. That killed me. Cause they were like Ellen Solar format because she had a kid reacting to a video. It's actually funny what? too, because I, that tweet was posted quite a while ago. I think that was posted like a year, <laughs> maybe a year and a half ago. Yeah. So like, um, people actually went back and they digged for that tweet because people remember something specifically about that. Well, that's that just shows like a pattern of behavior with them. Like, like their content is so original that yeah, Ellen, totally. in her infinite wisdom, is ripping them off. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's just ridiculous. So that that whole debacle, um, it culminated in them, I guess, either them or their company or something doing uh copyright claims on specific youtubers right um they did no claims went out that i know of well like, they, they canceled them some didn't they well they had some and then they canceled it right yeah but those what... were long before the react world format even came out really? so like yeah so like um i i forget the name of the channel but there was a youtube channel that uploaded a video talking about their experiences with the fine brothers where he had made a reaction video and kind of in the uh in their style where it's like you sit somebody down in front of a computer you show them a piece of content that clearly isn't theirs and you have them react to it and film it on camera <laughs> then upload it to youtube you that's, know original that's stuff. a whole that's a whole nother thing that irritates me too is that it's not even their content that they're showing to somebody because exactly. of course it isn't. You're showing somebody like, oh, here's this Super Bowl ad, or here's this video that some other YouTuber made. That I'm going to credit them, of course, which is fine, good for them. But it's it's not original. You're you're having someone react to something that you didn't make, and you're showing that thing in its entirety. Fun so, fact. Fun fact, actually. You know the thumbnail for Elders React? It's like a about, really old-timey kind of... Uh, thumbnail right um i found that very same image for uh free for public use within one or two google searches <laughs> <laughs> you're kidding me it's a public domain image it's or public a domain image? that is completely public domain and so is oh, the font you're phase. kidding me this so is like so they don't even create their own thumbnails like it's <laughs> it's oh, really bad that is that's really stupid um so related to this is more YouTube idiocy, if you want to talk about it. Uh, the Channel Awesome or I Hate Everything went through it, too. Uh, basically, YouTubers are getting hit with these weird things from YouTube. Uh, um, for example, yeah, sorry, good. Yeah, okay, so here's where I get into the portion of YouTube where I absolutely hate it, and I think it's a disgusting <laughs> system yeah. that needs to be... Because essentially the way that YouTube works at this current moment in time, because they haven't changed it for issues, reasons, is when you get hit with a copyright strike, or if you get hit with a take DMCA takedown notice or whatever... When you get hit with a strike, you are essentially treated guilty until proven innocent yeah. rather yeah, than it, innocent until proven guilty, which is unfortunate because essentially what that means is that when, say, ex-YouTuber, let's say um, the completionist or maybe in this example, the nostalgia critic will upload a video and they'll wait for it to get onto YouTube. Essentially, what that allows companies to do is that will allows uh different companies that uh are the owners of that intellectual property for a, in the example of nostalgia critic he does a lot of film uh yeah. critique mm -hmm. like very comedic film comedy sketch uh, <laughs> yeah. critique, which is amazing well, yeah, i love yeah. nostalgia critic He's, yeah i like him uh but that's that's another topic but but yeah, yeah he did a video uh, more recently and it it was uh it included an image of um i i it was a Studio Ghibli image. I know that much. Yeah, yeah. It's always, you know, not to be like weird or anything, but a lot of Japanese companies don't get American um, mm -hmm. intellectual property law. So they, they Specifically quickly. Specifically Studio Ghibli. 
I've heard yeah. this isn't the first horror horror story from Studio Ghibli. I've heard right. So well, I, I got hit from Nintendo before uh, you know for playing Super Mario World, which is you know like thirty years old or something. <laughs> so it was like or no twenty years old maybe. I, I think know. one of the reasons they actually made Mario Maker was so that they could actually uh, put those those assets back onto YouTube. Hmm. And uh, put them into the copyright system, but that's a different story altogether. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry. So the, the thing about the whole nostalgia critic thing is, he wasn't even the only one that w- it went through it that week. Because oh no, yeah, <laughs> so many, week. so many different channels went through it. In fact, yeah. if I were oh. to go back to Channel Awesome and I would go back to that very same video, I would probably be able to find. He said that he listed all the other channels that that happened to in the description. Yeah. So he listed. Yep. I know for a fact that he listed um, I Hate Everything. Yes, he, I Hate Everything, who I follow religiously almost. Um, um, I actually <laughs> don't follow him. I've only, like, it's funny because I've seen him in passing by. Like, I, I've seen him. But I've never actually bothered to watch his content. <laughs> I recommend it. He's, he's, he's funny and witty. which I, I, I've only watched his most recent rant about YouTube yeah. and why YouTube is poop because... <laughs> He's not wrong. I mean, <laughs> he's not. Uh, he got into it with uh, reactioners or reaction people, and uh, it was very entertaining <laughs> to see because then they reacted to his video where he was critiquing them, and then he did a reaction to their video where they were reacting to him talking reacting about reacting. <laughs> okay. So it essentially because, turns into a react fest and I have no idea what's going on. Yeah, it was so <laughs> meta, man. It was so, it was so meta. It was so deep. It yeah. Was, that was great. It was great. But um yeah, but basically what happened with him had to do with uh, cool cat saves the kids or something. It was a, uh, it was a movie about cool cat like this crappy, you know, he wore like a he looked like a Chuck E. Cheese character or something. Something is what he looked yeah, like. Yeah, I've um, I've watched it. It's wow, not. Wow! No. <laughs> oh God! I will never be a movie critic. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, what are you saying? Um. Yeah, but essentially, what what had happened uh, to to them is that they had gotten copyright strikes, specifically for um, I hate everything, which is actually. Right. Uh, really strange. He got a message from YouTube that had essentially said that they had disabled his channel. Like his channel got taken down yeah. entirely. Yeah, that was because, different. Um, so, so like first he got spam. that. Yeah, so first he got into it with uh, with Derek, uh, whatever his name is, the the guy behind that. Uh, cool Derek cat saves. Yeah, the cool cat guy. So he got into. it with that was very public on YouTube, on Twitter, and then you know they they sort of came to an agreement, and that was that. Then, like maybe a month after, then this was only like a few weeks ago, by the way. He suddenly just got that message from YouTube saying, "Hey, your video's down because you're spamming," and he, I mean, he wasn't spamming; he was just posting normal content, like he did movie reviews sometimes, and he did uh, reviews of. Uh, or he did he did like content stuff and movie reviews. That's that's his main mm-hmm. stuff. So I don't know what they were talking about. It was it was bizarre. Yeah, it's it? definitely interesting. And w- one of the things that um, if I if I'm going to tackle this, I, I think I have to tackle this like one little bit at a time because okay. YouTube is so like I, I don't want to just be jumping back and forth between I hate everything and nostalgia critic for like uh, this conversation. Okay. Yeah. So you want to focus mainly on Channel Awesome then, right? Let's do Channel Awesome first. Okay. So what had happened with um Channel Awesome? What had happened with nostalgia critic? Is basically they had gotten a copyright um claim or Studio strike, Ghibli, right? Yeah, was, for an friend. image, for Ghibli. one image that I think was used from Studio Ghibli. Ghibli. And it was it was in their uh, um, their January uh, Disney thing. That yeah, they do, within right? their Disney December. Yeah, of, that's it. That's Disney December videos. So essentially, what had happened was they had gotten the claim, and usually when those claims are put forth, you have the chance to dispute them because <laughs> uh, right. Usually, you, usually. Now that's, here's the here's the thing. 
So YouTube it's a, essentially claims you are guilty, and again, until proven innocent. Yeah, well, here's the thing about that. They have to do that, though. Like, uh, you know, we can complain, well, oh, you know, they really shouldn't do that. But they have to because you have these people putting up, like, movies and stuff. And as soon as it gets hit by Content ID or, like, by someone else, they sort of assume that it's it's all it is. Okay, you know, well... Violent. Okay, so let's go ahead and say that they have to do that. Right, right. With, I think there's an, a simpler sub solution to even that that would actually fix a lot of the issues. Okay. Uh, so, essentially, whenever you get hit by those kind of claims, they take all monetary revenue from you. Like, yeah. your video, usually uh, your ads get disabled or any ads that do play on that video end up going to Studio Ghibli because they claimed your video. They content ID'd yeah, it. Yeah, they can advertise on it now is what happens. So then so, they'll, they'll advertise on it and they'll get the revenue for advertising on it. So what you can do in the event that your content um, is fair use and does fall within fair use and you can legally talk about... W w when you're on the right grounds, basically. <laughs> mm -hmm. When you're on the right grounds... You can essentially go and you can dispute it. They give you about the length of a tweet. Yeah. To actually yeah, let you that's true. explain your situation. Like, yes, this is fair use. I am criticizing a piece of content, a piece of media. This is completely within my grounds. Um, within yeah. fair use. Yeah, and not to jump back and forth, but but yeah, I hate everything was talking about that. Like, you really don't get the amount of space you need to explain to them why this is legally allowed, and it's ridiculous. Um, and I, I actually went through that, too. Like, um, I actually had to file it for, um, I think it was The Conjuring, because I, I did a movie review on The Conjuring. You right? did, uh, and I know. Yeah, <laughs> which was, I thought it was all right, but <laughs> it was... Okay. So, so, you know, obviously, if you're talking about a movie and you have footage of the movie in there, they're going to hit you, like, right away. And mm -hmm. WB hit the movie right away. So I sent in all the stuff, and actually, they were pretty quick about it. Like, within two days, I had my, uh, my monetization back. Mm -hmm. you know? And that, that was great. But then, on the other hand, you have situations where it takes a month to hear anything yeah, you know, I think they give you what? What is it? They give they give them certain amount of length, a certain length of time to respond or something. Um, uh, I think it's fifteen days. I think yeah, it's 15 like fifteen. Days. Yeah, yeah, fifteen days, yeah. and then they they can respond to you, and then you have to respond, and then they have thirty days after in order to either take you to court or just drop it. Right? I think that's what it is. Most of the time, they'll just drop it. It's not worth it, and you're probably right anyways. So, so that's what happened. Um, but anyways, yeah, so in, in this situation with Channel Awesome, like, they, they have, like, legal representation. They, they have, like, a lawyer and stuff. So it's not like, like me writing about a WB film here or something like that. Yeah. So, so it's, it's like... Yeah. So... Sorry. Yeah. So, um... You have to go through that I, process. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's, and, it does, it's the whole process in general. Okay, sorry. The Getting entire distracted. process is broken. Let's yeah. just start from there. The process okay. is broken because it immediately validates any content creator to be like, oh, well, because we uploaded something with 15 seconds of a movie <laughs> thrown in. Yeah. Like so, So you have to prove... Um, on YouTube that you are allowed to use what you're using for a review, right? Mm -hmm. For example. Why don't they have it already set up so that if you're a reviewer, YouTube knows that you're a reviewer and, you know, they'll, they'll know after, a, like, I don't know, a certain amount of uploads, hey, he's reviewing video movies, so we probably should, you know, take a second look before we flag his videos or whatever. Yeah. I don't know why they don't do that. Because, like, I understand, like, throwaway accounts will post movies, you know, like, feature-length movies on, on YouTube, and then you'll be able to watch a movie for free on YouTube. Mm -hmm. That's what they're trying to avoid, right? Yeah. You would avoid that by having YouTube know who does what, right? Mm -hmm. it, it, that can't be too hard for them. It's freaking Google behind them. 
Yeah. They so have it's... algorithms for that. <laughs> I mean, I don't get it. They, I mean, it's not a, it's not a hard thing for them to do, but for some reason, they're so slow in doing it. And here's the worst part about all of this. Channel Awesome heard nothing. Nothing from them. Even having a lawyer on their side, they heard nothing from YouTube. Yeah, that's that's one of the biggest issues where like YouTube support is non-existent. Exactly. It, it doesn't exist. If you do contact someone, which is rare, especially for your smaller channel because you have less connections, and even like they have like a YouTube support email or like mm -hmm. a Google support email that you can contact and yeah. They'll maybe look at your email, but <laughs> you can't really guarantee that. It's nothing is ever guaranteed with YouTube. Yeah, it's fascinating because they actually don't even have a call center that you can call and and complain, hey, something's not working, can you fix it? They don't even have that. That's like the bare minimum of customer service and they don't even have it. Yeah, so it's, 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 it's fascinating. It really is. See, now the thing, the thing about YouTube is that because YouTube runs the online video media, uh, essentially, I guess, monopoly at the moment. Right. <laughs> like, at the moment, yeah, because because I think, uh, what was the other one that just shut down? Um, it wasn't Vimeo. It was, uh, uh, oh my gosh, someone, like, it was a big competitor of theirs. They just couldn't keep up, and they were, they're good, they're gone. Oh, Blip. Blip. It was Blip. Blip went down? I'm pretty sure it was a blip that dropped. I'm gonna I'm gonna confirm that. But what are you saying? So because they're like this big monopoly, essentially, at this current moment in time, um because they're because they are this like a uh, really big online video media and they don't really they have can, any competitors. Get away so that's why it. they that's why they can get away with this kind of stuff. Because there's literally right. nobody else that can take up the the home plate. Yeah, like, we nobody like who who am I to complain about YouTube's service, right? I'm, I'm just some guy on YouTube. YouTube but, is uh, yeah, the number two search engine, I think. It's like wow, Google's really? number one, and then YouTube's the top video search engine. Oh, this is crazy. So like for the fact that YouTube is the only really uh major league online video source. Like, there, there's nothing that can compete. Nothing can compete with YouTube. That's insane. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty interesting, um, the whole... Because, I mean, YouTube started out as just some video of some guy going to the zoo, right? <laughs> that's how it started out. And, it was uh, him, like, standing in front of an elephant. Like, that's an elephant. <laughs> yeah. And now, all of a sudden, it's, like, become what? Uh, it's a multi-million dollar company. Yeah, it's become a corporation, and uh, yeah, yeah, they ended uh, last year, August twentieth. Blip TV, one of their big competitors, and very uh, open about censorship. Like they didn't, they didn't try to censor anybody or anything. Mm -hmm. uh, gone. That's that's where a lot of Channel Awesome people were through, by the way. Was Blip. Yeah. So they're, that's why a lot of them are making the transition to YouTube now, like uh, Cinema Snob, uh, you know, some of the others. It's interesting. Um, how the landscape has changed, but I don't mean to keep throwing wrenches in what we're talking about. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's I, fine. It's, I mean, I can talk about this all day. But <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. It, I mean, I just don't understand what's going on with this. This. Uh, See, you know, like one of the things that I think that YouTube can do to fix their broken system, because it's in, like I've said multiple times before, it's guilty until proven innocent. What yeah. I think they can do. Is as long as Google implements a way so that there is no penalty to either side, whether a dispute is faulty or not. So, for example, if you're saying that your video goes under fair use and it clearly doesn't, the company should get that ad revenue, right? Okay, yeah, yeah. So, like, you uploaded a full movie onto YouTube because, you know, you thought that was smart. And then... <laughs> I won't get caught. <clears throat> uh, apologies. So you upload a full movie onto YouTube because it's, you, you thought that would be okay. They content ID it, and they either take it down because they don't want people seeing it, or they let it up with the exception of ad revenue coming to them. 
Yeah. Like, yeah. And that's, that's the system right now, right? That's the way it's set up. Um, it, content ID identifies whether it's a, a audio or video that's owned by somebody, and then they immediately flag it and say, this is content owned by somebody. Um, and you, you can pick, dispute that. And yeah, you can acknowledge it or you can dispute it. Now, the thing is, depending on the severity of, like, you know how they what the what the owner wants to do with it if if it's something they don't care that it's on youtube for example like music a lot of music they'll let you keep on your video um mm. but yeah exactly what you're saying you'll have to pay ad revenue um or not you uh the ad revenue that you would have earned actually just gets routed to them so exactly. they still make money off of it yeah the other but the big problem is when it's not actually theirs <laughs> when when they do not fall within the right to be able to take your ad revenue. Yeah. Here's the biggest and, problem, which yeah, is one yeah. of you probably heard a YouTuber complain about this at some point in time <laughs> in your life. I'm sure I've where, complained about it, but go ahead. So essentially whenever something gets claimed and it is within fair use and essentially YouTube is like, All right, well, we're going to send all this ad revenue over to X company, X or Y company. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What happens is uh, you can dispute the process. The video could stay up during this time, but any ad revenue that is made during that time, even if you do manage to dispute the video, will still stay with the company. It will not come back to you. Yep. That because revenue will can, it doesn't go back in time and get rerouted to you. So, like, it, you know, that's it. And yeah. uh, so, so, for example, like, uh, Angry Joe... Um, Oh, two years ago, had a video claimed by somebody for using an image in his video. Oh, I remember and, uh, that. Yeah, and so he got his his video got shut down for like that that first two one or two days um, as a result, and so he lost ad revenue because of that, and he's not getting it back. Guy, I think it was the big Nintendo debacle. Yeah. I, I think he Nintendo was claiming a lot of its stuff, even though they were sending him review copies. Yeah, I saw that too. Yeah, that was another thing. But I'm talking about a specific instance. So there was yeah. like a whole controversy on Twitter about it or something. I don't remember. It was it was a while ago. But but yeah, he he's <laughs> he's been through a lot of that, by the way. Oh um, no, yeah, I know Angry Joe has because Angry Joe he uh he likes angry. putting a lot of gameplay clips up without talking over them or like the volume <laughs> very loud. So it so that translates into the content ID picking him up. Yeah, content ID goes, "Oh, this is a Nintendo game you're uploading and you're not you're not doing it for like uh, a commentary or something. So clearly you're violating their copyright." It was only 15 is, seconds. Yeah, but it's 15 we're gonna seconds. Flag no it anyways. In like an hour long video, 15 seconds you're going to identify as Nintendo owning. I mean, that's just the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Mm -hmm. But but anyways, no, I had a situation. I think I told you about it, where a company was claiming a like a section of one of my movie review. Um, yeah, I had used audio in that that uh, review because I wanted to emphasize one of the plot points. And uh, some guy claimed, or not some guy, it was a company claimed it and said, "Hey, one of our artists uses that clip in his song, so you're violating his copyright." Oh, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I mean, what? You're going to claim the audio from a movie that I'm reviewing and say you own the right to that audio? You've <laughs> got to be kidding me. That's so stupid. And I you remember, should let them do it. I, I think there's a band. I forget what band specifically, but there's like a band that uses uh, one of the scenes from Lord of the Rings oh, yeah. to open up their song. Or to, yeah, like, the, it's a scene where, like, they're talking. Hmm. And uh, they use that to open into the song. And I guess they had to get, like, some type of life, uh, license. Was it like a, to do a that. metal song? So you, instead of it going to the uh, movie producer, it goes to the band. Because the band, so, like, you could upload a clip, that same clip of them talking onto YouTube and instead of <laughs> it going to like the uh the movie studio or the movie producers or whatever it goes to the band because for whatever reason they have the license somehow <laughs> <laughs> how does that work especially it's like I was reviewing the movie 
it had nothing to do with his stupid audio, like his his song that used that that audio clip. And so it it was just so out of left field. It was like it's it's like okay, we're both taking from this movie. I'm reviewing the movie, so you're saying that you own what I'm reviewing. I, it it's it's it, it, uh. yeah, it, it got <laughs> it got stupid really fast. So I yeah, I fought it and I won eventually, but. Like it was one of those things where I went through like thirty days of arguing with them about it, and I think ultimately after an, a month and a half, it was resolved, and they didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. so, so yay, the system works after a month and a half. Yeah, <laughs> and it's, again, like I feel like there's an easy fix to like what YouTube can do. Like, mm -hmm. so let's say. YouTube starts to implement this instead of immediately sending through ad revenue to the company. Why don't they just? Why doesn't Google hold the ad revenue? Hold the ad revenue until this dispute is settled. Yeah, see, and that would make sense because so, then it would go into like a, I don't know, like Google's a purgatory. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> some. Some kind of a account that Google holds the ad revenue in, and then it just gets transferred to the right owner, you know, something like that. Mm -hmm. That that could work, but it would require Google setting up all of these, like, accounts. That would require and, Google participating in their automated yeah, system. That's too much work <laughs> for us, guys. We're just going to sit back here without our call centers or service people. We're just going to sit here and let you guys solve it. Our automated judge, jury, and executioner will do all the work. That's <laughs> what happens with it right now. Oh, dude. So um, we're getting close to the end now. Uh, what do you want to do? Do you want to move on to this whole Twitter situation, or do you want to? Do you want me to? Wind I don't down? have much to say about the entire Twitter situation, if only for the fact that I don't really know much about it because I've only heard about it today. Oh yeah, the the um, Twitter algorithm thing, right? Yeah, the Twitter algorithm. I haven't heard anything about that. Um, like I haven't heard any of the nitty gritty details. Like I've only heard like, oh yeah, yeah. they're getting an algorithm. Like, oh, um, why? Well, <laughs> yeah, let's, okay. Well, let me go over real quick. Basically Twitter is implementing something where it's going to show stuff that you're interested in more. Um, basically out of chronological order is what, what it sounds like. And people were freaking out about it on Twitter of all places. So, so, so now they're worried that it's going to completely mess up the timeline system, you know, where you read bottom to up to see what's in order and then, uh, you know, see what, see what people are replying to because it right now the system works if only because it makes sense in terms of when something happens, you know, mm -hmm. if they mix it up, and now stuff that's older shows up, you know, and random places just because you might be interested in it. It might make Twitter more chaotic than it already is. And that's what people are worried about. So I don't know. I, I mean, personally, I don't, I don't care. I really don't. Um, I know people are screaming like it's the end of the world. I'm more concerned about Twitter, like, you know, blocking people and banning people than, than this, you know. I don't care about the, this so much. Mm -hmm. I don't know, whatever. But, <laughs> but yeah, the Twitter, the whole Twitter thing's not a big deal. Yeah. I was gonna, yeah, I was gonna close out the show talking about Bayonetta. If you like, do you you haven't played Bayonetta, have you? No, I haven't. I haven't had. Oh, the, you're missing out, dude. Bayonetta I haven't had so the great. miss. I haven't had the fortune of playing. <laughs> you're gonna Bayonetta say yet. misfortune is what you're gonna say. I haven't had the fortune. <laughs> <laughs> to play Bayonetta yet, and it's uh, it's unfortunate because I've heard it's a very good game. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Devil May Cry developers, right? Um, worked on it. And the thing about thing about Bayonetta is, uh, it is so much fun. Is <laughs> what's what the thing about it? And and there are a few games you can say, well, I'm just gonna chill out and have fun killing a bunch of things today. You know, right now games have to have so much in the way of like. Mm -hmm you know, depth in them. And and I'm not going to say Bayonetta is not deep because there are very deep things in it. Um, you know, themes and subtexts and, uh, you know, stuff like that. There's even good characterization in Bayonetta. But the thing about it is that it's fun. 
and it's so hard to find games that you can just have fun with now, and that's one of the few. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, in order to talk about Bayonetta, I, I initially said on one of my um, morning drives, which, by the way, I record in my car <laughs> because I don't have time to do stuff anymore. Um, in one of my morning drives, I talked about how I wanted to close out these shows talking about the art and philosophy of games, right? Well. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like a heavy topic, but I don't really think it is. So, for example, okay. In Bayonetta, the cutscenes all have like a weird film quality to them. Like, not movie film, but like uh, photography, right? Mm. Bayonetta's attacks all have to do with her posing and doing like weird poses and stuff. In fact, she poses in many times for, at, or at many times, for the camera itself, mm-hmm. which I thought was really weird when I first started playing it. But it occurred to me over time that the high heels, the makeup, the hair, you know, everything about it screams high fashion in Bayonetta. From the films to the posing to the music, everything has to do with fashion. And so essentially, she is a model. That's essentially, I mean, essentially, that's what she's doing. She's attacking angels with her hair and she's fighting with, with the, you know, high heels on. And it's, it's amazing to think about. I, I just thought that was really cool when I started thinking about it. There's there's just a lot of things in in the game that has to do with fashion. I thought that was a pretty cool idea. I, I think know. a lot of games do that. I'm not sure if you ever played... Um, I'm not sure which Beautiful Joe exactly it was. It might have been Beautiful Joe 2. <laughs> no, I haven't played it, but... But, yeah, it looked, but one of yeah. them just... It's like they're going through movies and movie mm. sets. So every single level you go through is like you're going through this uh, the set of a movie. Oh, okay. And you're fighting crime on along the side, like it's, so. It's so it's sort of like a like a superhero movie. Then is that that the idea? Kind of, yeah. And a lot of it is framed along like that. And I I like that. I like when they stylize things to be like that. You know? Yeah, I think I think there was more like Bayonetta. The whole thing has to do with like that whole glamour culture, you know? Because you have the runway models, you have the European fashion industry, that kind of thing. It sort of hearkened to that, is what Bayonetta did. Um, the bad guys are angels that look like monsters. Even though they speak like an actual angel angel language or something, mm-hmm. you know, I don't. <laughs> it's really weird. So it it's it's an interesting idea that Bayonetta represents, um, you know, the very very best that humanity thinks of itself. Mm-hmm. This high fashion industry. She's literally a model for humanity <laughs> at that point. I just I don't know. There's something about that that is so fascinating that uh, makes me love the game even more. You know, that's just me. I recommend it. You should play it. I will definitely have to keep... I will definitely have to pick it up at some point. Because I want to get the uh, the bundle that the comes Wii with the original one. one. Yeah, it comes yeah. with the original Bayonetta and Bayonetta 2. Yeah, I picked it up. And I'm playing through Bayonetta 1 now. Um, but I got sidetracked by Fallout 3 again. So, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know I, I can't play Fallout 3. My brother's played it, like, non-stop. So you know all this stuff, so there's no point. Um, it's not that there's no point, it's just I'm tired of seeing it. <laughs> I'm just that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah. It, it makes sense. Cause like my brother played Morwind a lot. And uh so like I you know, I saw him playing Morwind and he like memorized where everything was. So then when it was up to me to start playing Morwind, it was like well, I already know where all the stuff is in Morrowind. Um, I've already seen these plot lines play through. What's even the point of me playing? I'm kind of sick of it by, <laughs> by now. So that's how I felt. I don't know. Yeah. So So, anyways, um, let's close out. Did you want to tell people where to find you? Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram? I'm on I don't the know. internet. <laughs> Specifically on Twitter and YouTube. At HTTP colon forward slash forward slash I don't, I don't know about all that you can just tell them super positive <laughs> youtube.com forward slash super positive and on twitter you can find me as 
at super positive p a w s i t i v e for anybody who needs to know exactly how to spell that because i've had so many people look me up as p o s <laughs> yeah. i t i v e that's an oversight in my opinion that is something that i just did not see <laughs> yeah no it's it's good though because it's a good name people remember it and people find it and so mm. it's and plus your branding's pretty good so <laughs> yeah you've got that going Eh, that's debatable. Debatable. Yeah, I like I've it. been I've been questioning it as of late, but <laughs> no, so. I uh, yeah, I I don't know. Finally, my name makes sense, Frank Gamer Show, mm -hmm. because this is the Frank Gamer Show. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean it works. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So this is Frank Gamer. Uh, thank you all for watching. I want to give a big thank you to you, Super Positive, or Woo! Paul. <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah, it was a good show, man. Very so, good. Uh, Bye. Yeah. Everybody take care and uh, stay tuned for the next one. Probably not next week or the week after because I'm really busy for the next three weeks. But we'll see in like a month <laughs> how that works out. All right. See you all next time, Saturday, 8 p.m., some other day. See ya.